Welcome back ladies and gents to the next episode of Zero to Hero. Now if you were watching our stream the other day we were playing this account on stream. Now as you can tell already it's not going too well. At tier 8 that is everywhere else it's going beautifully. However at tier 8 we are struggling. Now even a player of our magnitude does struggle but Let's see what we can do today. Let's see if we can get any more games sorted. Okay, so the first battle today is going to be on Ensk in a all tier matchup. Now, what can we do in this battle? We will have to find out. First of all, we are going to play like a, a very passive role. We're going to use this bush directly in front of us to see if we can outspot anybody crossing over. Not that there's not already been a lot of tanks crossing. Now, much like all instances, I do blind shot through the walls because I will not be able to see them crossing otherwise. Now, they might have already crossed already. If they have, it's a shame. But any stragglers, we should be able to pick up a little shot or two. Now, we're going to be here for the first instance and basically see how the game unfolds. We can see that there are a number of tanks being spotted now on the east which isn't good because that means their whole team is on the other flank now the contingency we have at the moment is we probably should try and aggress on this side to try and take some map control back because at the moment we're not looking too best off now at the moment there is a KV-5 and a CS not spotted so we need to be very careful there T28 prototype comes around the corner. What happens? We immediately bounce. He just fired one, so maybe we can get a follow up. That's nice. And he does have the 120 mil gun, which does in fact mean he does have like an 8 second reload. Now, he has a restricted turret traverse, but unfortunately, he can still see us at the moment. That's fine. He is just reversing though, which is strange. Now, we made him fire, so we should be able to pick up the kill here. Nice. And we low rolled. Wait, what? We must have set him on fire. Holy, holy Jesus. Alright, weak spot on KV-5 front. The... Lovely. Now, with, in conjunction with our team, we want to try and make as big of an impact as possible. So, we do need to get rid of this KV-5 as soon as possible, because that is going to be the make or break at this moment. There is a Lynx that has just proxied us, which is rather catastrophic. Anybody here? Nope. We're going to load gold because it is a KV-5 and standard ammunition. Even trying to shoot in the arse may not work to the best. So, rear of the turret, that should have been a loader slash ammo rack. Now we should have him now. He fired. Let's fire one more and let's leave the team to deal with him as such. Now, can we intuition our AP before the Lynx goes? We can. That's a CS, but we're going to continue running because CS, 320 Alpha, we don't really want to see that. Okay, so he knows we were trying to lure him into a trap there, which is rather interesting. We are world of low rolls today. Okay, we missed. I can see the 703 is coming back. Which isn't good, because that's going to hurt. We're going to load a gold, because it is a 703. Oh, artillery is out. And we couldn't hit him. Oh, he's double. Oh, he only fired one, but he high rolled for that one. Oh, dearie me. Not bet we're not as good off now as we thought we would be. Okay. Their team are playing very competently. That 703 has now turned his turret by looks of it. Let's see if we can get a sneaky. We got a sneaky shot in there, that's good. Now we want to try and still keep the distance because there's still close match at this moment in time and also we know artillery is active we know artillery are causing havoc so 
So in conjunction with our team we need to try and do as much as we can from afar I would say. Now nice little sniping shot from here, that's beautiful. Maybe able to get a second, no, that's fine. Scorpion, maybe get one on him. Okay, we got one on the Scorpion as well, which is beautiful. Hopefully we can secure the finish, if not a T44 can, that's good. Caliban's up, let's try and get one shot. Okay, we've got one shot in the Caliban, but because the Caliban has terrific view range when equipped correctly, he will spot us from there. Now, just going to wait for him to reverse and put one shot in again. Okay, now it's just a Caliban left with a Mod 1. I can't help but feel like this game is actually in the bag. <laughs> Which it would appear. And that is going to be all she wrote by the looks of it. Let them secure the kill. The Caliban unfortunately doesn't pen the Renegade. And the Renegade finished the game. Now for the start of the, this episode, I think that is a nice way to start. Nice secured win there. I thought she wasn't an ace, which is just unfortunate there. We still are grinding for that ace. However, we still did make a little bit of profit, considering we didn't have a credit booster running, but we did make enough experience. So at the moment, we are well on the way to acquiring our first tier 9. Prior to the past battle where we managed to secure 3.4 thousand damage, are we going to be able to achieve a similar result in this next game? We are on highway in a equal tier matchup again. Now, looking at the spread at the moment, there are a lot, and I mean a lot, of tank destroyers. Now, that can work one of two ways. Either we're going to get absolutely destroyed, or they will get absolutely destroyed. Now, as it stands, I don't really want to push all the way in because I haven't got no support. I could inform them that I need support, however, at the moment, unless their heavies are here, all of their medium tanks are on the opposite flank. So, my question is, have they left this flank open? Hope, okay, somebody shot there. Okay, now, where we have max view range, we want to try and use that. So if someone is here, we will know about it, unless it's a scout, who will outspot us quite easily. Now, we've already lost one scout in this instance, and unfortunately it looks like, just based on the minimap, we are going to lose our second scout. What we will do, need to do, though, is we will need to try and pick this ELC up quite quickly. Now, critical hit straight on him there shouldn't have spotted us because we were double pushed and we missed our follow up which is a shame now so we are now sp not spotted um, and that he's gone wow um, I think we may have killed his commander there to be honest because he would have spotted us when we fired our second shot because this tank does not have great camo now Based on the S1's hit points, we know there is some tank destroyers along this ridge line here. At the moment, where it's one scout apiece on either team, it's hard to say what their bat chat is going to do. Any competent bat chat driver will disregard the position where he's currently at. So let me just enlarge that. He'll disregard the position where he's currently at. Okay. And he would realistically rotate back and he will be somewhere in this region here. You would expect. However, now that he can... So, the scorpion spotted, so that might lead me to believe that the theory of the backchat rotating is correct. Now, we are currently losing this engagement. Do I really want to push into tank destroyers that can kill me before I even spot them? Probably not. Me being me, I do like taking a few blind shots. Because these are common positions. OK. 
Okay. Don't really want to stay here. Don't really want to push there because that is going to be a. I, I do believe it's going to be a catastrophic failure to do that. However, if the bat chat was dead, I would reconsider. But as it stands, nobody knows where the bat chat is, and until that point, there's not a lot we can do. Now, I'm going to cross this little ridge because if I get spotted, the bat chat or the barask is in the middle. Rask's now spotted. That must mean the bat chat is down here. So, I'm currently being monitored rotating. Which might lead the enemy team to believe they can push freely. But we'll have to wait and see. And would you look at that? Bat chat's up. T103 is now pushing as well. So, the plan which we set in stone has worked. Oh no. Right, so we did a little rotate. We know T103 is pushing. We know the bat chat was pushing to that position there. Now, the S1 died because he must have shot, leading to him being spotted. Now, the bat chat does have a very nice view range for its tier. If we can pick up this T103 for free. Okay, so our Panthera looks like he's spotted. So at the moment, we're still going to play passive. There's no point in rushing around. Because there's still a GTOL. As much as you can be pinged by your team, what you need to do is play the game that you know how to play. Now, from here, I cannot pin him. From here, I could. We are going to go over the top. But we are going to load a gold round because we don't want to really faff around taking our time with this guy we want to get him out of the game quick and now we are lit and we tracked the bat chat which is good T103 has a roughly 9 second reload we need to take out that bat chat because he is the one that can cause the most damage because he is the one that spots us the whole time now the panthera can now push take him out we're going to push aggressively as well across open field to see if we can spot the scorpion or the g-saw and get that visual for our team. However, at the moment there is still a T-34-3 which could have rotated, but we are going to find that out presently. Uh, can we get a securing shot on the move? We bounced. G-Saw is now lit. Courtesy of us. On the move again. Okay, didn't do much. We still got the G-Saw lit. He's now going to shoot at us, most likely. We Oh, he's not lit no more. Panthera, can you secure? Nope, I'll do it for you. Okay, so with the G-Saw, he didn't shoot at us, which leads me to believe he could be on reload. If he is, we're going to find that out. But just remember, there is still a Scorpion G not spotted. And I'm thinking he could be here as well. Right. Let's see how far we can get. Obviously, if the G-Saw is reloaded, our game is going to come to an abrupt end. Scorpion G's on the opposite side of the map. G-Saw fired one. G-Saw fired two. G-Saw fired three. And that is going to be all she wrote for the G-Saw. Panthera, thank you for securing the kill. Hello, Scorpion. How are you today? Nice to meet you again, Scorpion. Uh, I am behind you, just so you're aware, sir. Um, unfortunately, you are now dead. AMBT, how's it going over there, my friend? Are you going to secure the kill on the Shrek and the Ice Free? Possibly, possibly, possibly... He secured the ice free. Can he secure the Shrek? He secured the Shrek. And 
I couldn't faff about with him. I knew he was firing gold, so that's why I did too. So, back to back, we have secured a first class mastery badge again. And it would appear we have done some blind damage as well. I would imagine it was on the G saw. It was. So, as it stands, we are still going quite strong in this grind. And will we secure the ace tanker before we unlock our tier 9? Now, statistically, our win rate is slowly going up. We did start at 33% win rate. However, it is going up quite nicely, and our mark of excellence is at 56%. Now, two battles in, that went really well. How it's going to go for the rest of the grind is hard to say, but I hope you'll be joining me on the route and the journey to seeing how our, the rest of our grind goes and whether we can, in fact, get our Pershing into above 50% wins. But as I said, guys, stay tuned. You'll find out and see all the troublesome times that we go through. But until next time, I appreciate you all for watching. If you are liking what you're seeing, drop a like, drop a subscribe. It is free after all, and it helps me out greatly. And maybe give us some feedback. Let us know what you think of the series. Let us know what you might want to see or changes you would like to see in this series itself. But until next time, guys, take care and much love.